Well, it's really great to have you on the show. We've met just a handful of times, um, and I've seen some of the work you've been doing on uh, the Great Adventure Bible stuff. That's what you call it, right? <laughs> That's the name of it. And uh, it's, I've been really impressed, and so I'm, I'm really excited to, to have you on the show. Tell our listeners a bit about yourself and me. Yeah, no, it's, it's really great to be here. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I hail from uh, Dayton, Ohio, and uh, I uh, grew up Catholic, but kind of a name only, and um, didn't necessarily mean a whole lot, and went to uh, play small college football and just had a big conversion at Benedictine College, I heard which is about that, yeah. where I teach now, uh, but uh, never dreamed I'd be where I am now. And um, I, On points with Aquinas? Yeah, Dr. Shri. Oh, yeah, that too. Uh, so he, he taught there for nine years, and he kind of just changed my life, and I went to this to kind of do what he did uh, for me, for others. So, so tell us about that, how Dr. Shri changed your life, because I've heard a little bit about yeah, it. You know, I just had never had a man proclaim the gospel with conviction and confidence like that before, and I, you know, I learned more frankly, in a semester with him that I did 12 years of Catholic education. Uh, it, it just, it was over time, it was focused, it was different, a different group of friends, but uh, that, that kind of confident conviction, proclamation of the gospel, um, it was powerful. So were you playing football at Benedictine College at the yeah, time? Yeah, no, I was, I was. And, uh, and that hasn't always been a, correct me if I'm wrong, but that hasn't always been like a stellar Catholic institution. Oh, no, no, no. And, and, I mean, in fact, and, and I think uh, it, it really... There were seeds planted before us, but it kind of really turned while Sarah and I were there, to be honest with you. Um, yeah, no, it, it's, uh, it's got a long history, but no, it, it really has reclaimed its Catholic identity in, in powerful ways. And, and the school's enrollment is more than doubled the size of the school that we went to. Uh, and it, it was a long time ago, but it wasn't that long ago. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, I, I kind of I did well. I made the travel team my freshman year, playoff squad my freshman year. Kind of think you had everything you want, but you know that there's something missing, right? There's, there's, there's just, you know, when, you're, when your happiness, your joy is dictated by your times, your weights, your playing time, et cetera, um, there's something off. And then I huh. we played an exhibition game in Paris, France my freshman year, wow. in May after the season got out. And uh, This is NFL football? No. <laughs> not NFL football. I mean, American football. American Not rugby. That's the distinction I was trying to make. Sorry. That, that's exactly right. It's yeah. not XFL either. What's that? Oh, this new... Uh, alternative, uh, you know, know, guys who aren't quite NFL, but yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. So American football, <laughs> yep. uh, I broke my fibula in the game over there. And, and for me, my world was just crazy. I didn't even want to go at the time. I wanted to get back home to train. Where, where's um, your fibula? Where was this? Uh, lower calf, calf, you know, so not, not, not the big your femur. Not my femur, no. my fibula. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. But, but it, it's, so for me at the time, I just went to a depression. My world, my identity was kind of gone. And, uh, I ended up redshirting that next season because I didn't want to waste a year of eligibility not having trained all summer. Um, and then I, Dr. Shree and I had be, uh, had, had him for two classes and I had declared a theology major, but not for good reasons. I was just kind of intrigued intellectually, but it cool. hadn't gone from the head to the heart. And that summer's kind of going head to the heart. Um, we went out to lunch and I was firing questions at him left and right. And uh, he's like, and I'm teaching this class called Christian Moral Life. It's full, but it sounds like from your questions, it'd be up your alley. If you'd like, I'll let you in. And well, so forgive yeah. me, where is this? In, in Benedictine or? Benedictine College. Yes, he's student. teaching there. He's the teaching there. Okay. Yeah, he taught there for nine years. And uh, I don't know how to say it, but that class changed my life. Right? You know, walk in wow. and think it's about Bible says this, can't do this, church says that. It's, you know, freedom, virtue, happiness, friendship. All of, it's all of a sudden I saw intellectually, this is why you're not happy because you're made for more. And then, uh, you know, got involved with focused Bible study. And uh, wow. I remember being in my dorm room <clears throat> in my sophomore year, October. And I remember... I was in a relationship with a girl back at Ohio University and uh, good girl though she was, it was clear this is the last thing that was kind of keeping me back from the life mm -hmm. I wanted to live. Try not to bang on the table. Yeah, and, and um, I remember praying in my dorm room almost audibly um, saying, do you want me to leave this relationship? And I remember almost saying to myself uh, and almost saying out loud, no matter what you say, I'm not going to do it. And I can't nice. explain it, but two months later, going up for Christmas break, I just knew inexorably this was the last thing holding you back. And uh, for her sake and for mine, walked away, and uh, it was like gas on a fire after that. You just couldn't couldn't shut me wow. up. And, and then Sarah transferred in the following fall, so it was really kind of powerful that uh, I felt like the Lord prepared me to meet her. She yeah. didn't have to worry if uh, is my conversion about her, or is it legit, is it sincere? Yeah, because it happened before I met her, uh, and then the rest is history. So were you quite popular being the football guy? I mean, it, it, where Benedictine was at the time, it it caught some waves because no one yeah, really, you, I mean. you had the kind of the God squad, Bible beaters, and you had the athletes yeah. and the jocks and the party crowd and no one really uh, darkened each other's doorways. And so, yeah, it was, uh, it was a powerful, um, that's really, you know, not to, I mean, not to be bold, but it, it was, it caught people's attention yeah. and we were able to kind of build some bridges. We had a, a football non-denominational Bible study for a while. And, and we, we had a lot of kind of evangelical efforts, uh, just trying to kind of bring people out of the party crowd. And, and you uh, said Focus was on the campus at the Focus time? Focus began at Benedictine College. Oh, wow, yeah, I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, it was part of Dr. Shree and Focus all began together late 90s. Wow. Uh, we rolled up, I was there uh, August 2000 as a freshman. Oh, so, okay, so when did you have your conversion? What year was that? 
So uh, it was the height of it was like 9-11. Uh, oh, so that, I was in, it was in Dr. Street's Christian Moral Life class at the time when yeah. that happened. And then that Christmas break is when I left that relationship. Sarah transfers in the, the following fall. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Mine was in 2000 at Rome. Well, you think? Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, so yeah, it's a couple yeah, of years. Look, the That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. And so, but then you went on to get a doctorate in what? And how did that, how did that go? Well, you know, with, um, you know, part of my, uh, so the conversion with Dr. Shree's moral life class was powerful, but also one thing he did for me is he connected Jesus with the church. Mm-hmm. Uh, cause it's easy to be like, oh, I love Jesus, get the church thing away from me. Right. And, and so salvation history was kind of really the, some of the seeds of my conversion and he inculcated a great love of scripture for me. And, and I, I, you know, back then with Benedict and, um, you know, he had like three theology professors right now we have 10, right? I mean, I, I was able to take seminars with him as a sophomore and as a junior, I mean, you can't get in those classes now cause it's too full. Um, so uh, on his own counsel, I went to uh, Trinity Evangelical Divinity School to mm. do a master's in Old Testament and Semitic languages. Uh, so I was the only Catholic in the program. I, and it was, they were, you know, uh, I was, you know, lived in a dorm with these guys and half of them are kind of PhD bound, half of them are kind of pastor bound. And it was, it was awesome. I mean, did Hebrew there, did Aramaic there, did Greek there, did a lot of archeology span and history and stuff like that. Um, and so I, uh, and how, how, I mean, obviously you were very bored into the Catholic faith at this point, but what was it like being with these other kind of intellectual Christians talking about Catholicism versus evangelicalism? (sighs) Well, you know, I, one story, so uh, good, my best friend from that time, his name's James Merrick, who's now writing for Ascension's uh, blog, actually. Mm -hmm. So at the time we went round around for hours and hours. We bonded over N.T. Wright, a shared love Mm -hmm. of N.T. Wright. We had a class with Kevin Van Hooser together, who's kind of like a kind of like an evangelical Bishop Barron. I mean, at the time it was kind of a up and coming. And, um, so we, we, we spent hours and hours and hours and uh, I walked away from that thinking, I just didn't say the right things. Hey, we were friends, but he, you know, he, he would defend me to the Protestants. He would, he would, he rejected soul scripture, but huh. I couldn't quite bring him all the way. Uh, we lost touch for about, uh, five, six years. He went off and did a doctorate at Aberdeen in Scotland, um, on Carl Barth, became an Anglican priest for 10 years. And then we got back in touch and he's like, you know, those conversations really impacted me. And he became a Benedictine oblate two summers ago. What? He brought his entire family into the church, became Catholic at the time because of that lost his minister's visa visa, had to leave Scotland, had to come back to the States from the States, but he had to leave the States. I mean, really his, his, um, you know, ecclesial career was seemingly over his academic career, didn't know where to go. Uh, so that was a great example for me of, of someone who we went round and round. And sometimes you think you say the right Just thing, a bit, bit closer to the okay. mark. Yeah. Sometimes you think you say the perfect thing, right? Yeah. They're going to fall like a deck of cards. Totally. And the Holy yeah. Spirit just yeah. humbles you. And sometimes you think he just screwed it up. Yes. And the Holy Spirit surprises you. He's a great example for me of a, of a conversion that took years. I mean, years to mature and blossom. Uh, but now he's a powerful, we teach him at a Catholic high school. He's working with Scott Hahn. He's writing for Ascension. He's Gonna, really? He's got a book deal for Ascension Press right now. What's his name? Uh, James Merrick. And where uh, does he teach? Uh, it's a high school in Pennsylvania. Okay. Uh, he's been working for the St. Paul Center as well with wow. Scott Hahn. And uh, so that was so through Sri, I got linked to Hahn. And, and when James was converting, I, I, I wrote to, to Scott and I said, here's a guy who's got a similar background as you. He's got yeah. some of the same intellectual heroes as you. And just kind of, just so let's just see what happens. And, uh, and Scott, I mean, really incredibly generous Um brought James on for a year at the St. Paul Center, wanted to help kind of give him a Catholic formation, give him Catholic street cred. And that's what gave him the, got him the uh, high school teaching job. He was also adjunct at Franciscan at the time. Uh, and now I think he's going to return with Scott. So, I mean, it's, it's been great to see these worlds collide because James was reading Scott. He read, he read the catechism when we were at Trinity. He read Scott's dissertation. He was reading everything. And now it just, like I said, it just took time to develop. So I love being there. Um, I, I did start to see, initially my plan was to go PhD Old Testament. I also kind of saw uh, some of our disagreements are not just about grammar and syntax. And I kind of want a more robust kind of theology and philosophy. So that's when I went from there and did my doctorate at Mundelein, uh, where it was so like father Bishop Barron was just a priest at the time, just a professor. Mm-hmm. Father Barron did my decision under Father Edward Oaks. The, the schools were about 20 minutes apart. So I was at a Protestant seminary and then a Catholic seminary. Jeez. And it kind of, you know, I, I, I mean, for me, my great love. Uh, so I wrote on nature and grace and, and Aquinas and to, to go from Aquinas' metaphysics to ancient Hebrew and back and forth. And, and to see that the Jewish Jesus is the divine Jesus, that the fulfillment of the story of Israel 
is fulfilled in the church. And in, in, in another uh, uh, friend of mine I see every year at a conference, Brant Petrie, yeah. uh, it was just, I just finished his uh, Jesus and Last Supper with uh, a group of students, a seminar I'm teaching, and he talks about the Eucharistic restoration of all Israel. I mean, it's, it's, he's taken the N.T. Wright project so much further, so much deeper. So Dr. Sheree planted those seeds a long time ago, love for N.T. Wright, love for salvation history. Uh, and it's, it's it, but I also had a great philosophy mentor at Benedictine uh, named Dr. Rio, and he's a TAC grad, just kind of gave me that kind of pure Thomism. Uh, uh, and so for me, those worlds kind of collided then and continue to collide. And, and it's just been, it's just been powerful. You know, I mean, I, I joke, I'm like, I'm, I'm just trying to be the ass upon which our Lord rides to Jerusalem. <laughs> hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you will absolutely love the full interview. So click right there to enjoy the whole thing. Also, a big thanks to these groups who made that interview possible. Learn more in the show notes below about these guys. They're absolutely incredible and honored to have them as sponsors. Oh, and also, if you haven't subscribed yet, click subscribe and then that bell button. That way YouTube will be forced to let you know when we put out more content.